The Coach Curl Podcast is brought to you by Think and Grow Business, the home of the Think and Grow Business Mastermind. If you're serious about growing your business, get serious and join a mastermind group today. Find out more at thinkandgrowbusiness.com.au. Hey there, it's Tony here and welcome to episode 95 of the Coach Curl Podcast. Today I'm sharing the story of Daniel Owens, uh, another one of the New York marathoners that I met when I was in New York. An amazing guy from Tasmania. You're going to love his story. Episode 95 of the Coach Girl Podcast, sharing some of the stories from the New York Marathon. Now, today's story is about Daniel Owens. Now, I met Dan again at the Parker Hotel in West West 56th Street, and Dan has a real passion for health. So he works in the in the medical industry. I won't I won't take that spotlight away from him. He'll share his story around that in the interview, but he was raising funds for Cancer Tasmania, uh, transport for treatment, I, I believe, was what the, the majority of the funds were going for. Now, he raised over $10,000, which is an in, incredible amount. And in our chat, uh, before the interview, he actually spoke of some of the other ventures uh, where he'd been continuously, continuously raising money. So... A real genuine, kind-hearted gentleman, Um, one who's got a real passion for the health industry and obviously working and raising funds for it. So it it was quite inspiring once again to meet someone who was there to serve others and was running the marathon as part of that that goal. Now, there's an interesting twist to the story because when I connected with Dan just recently, just to get an update around what happened during the the marathon and after the marathon, there's an interesting twist to the story. So please stay tuned after the interview. But first, here's Daniel Allen. No. Hey there, it's Tony here. And once again, I'm downstairs at the Parker Hotel in West 56th Street, New York. And it's my pleasure now to have a chat with Dan Owens. Now, Dan actually is running the marathon for a cause. So it's going to be a very interesting conversation. But first, Dan, welcome to the podcast. Thanks very much, Tony. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, I I just want you to share that story you just shared with me. Now, this isn't your first marathon, is it? It's not. So I, I did the London Marathon six years ago, but... Uh, not as well as I, I could have done. I was injured for that, and but I completed it. But uh, due to you know, I've, for this marathon, I'm hoping that I'm able to complete it uninjured. And so far, so good. So, so far, so good. Yeah. So you, your training's been going well. It's been good. Yeah. So I've actually uh, attempted to run train for a marathon without doing too much road running and I think that's what the, <laughs> I'm trying to make that the key because I d- just did long road runs once a week and yeah. I tried to do something every other every day okay. otherwise not running on roads so not necessarily running every day but no yeah no so I did it would do a couple of treadmill runs uh swim row uh do some strength uh work and so far so good so I've managed to get to 36 k's in a long run and okay. not to cause any not to have any problems with tendons or or with um muscles etc so okay. that's worked for worked for me so far so are you looking at a time for tomorrow uh so the time i've nominated is four hours and, four hours. and i talk to the four hour pacer so i'm sort of committed to <laughs> i know his name is connor <laughs> so i've now got a relationship with connor that i've got to keep so yeah, you know yeah. that's another motivation to stick to that so connor's going to help um pull you through uh, i hope so yeah it's all up to connor it's not yeah. not so much to me it's up to connor <laughs> So Dan, I mentioned that you were running for a cause. So um, yeah, so the um, so I'm a I'm a hematologist, so a cancer care physician, and I wanted to run the marathon and and also run to support cancer uh, care in Tasmania. Yeah. So that a lot of work is done by Cancer uh, Council Tasmania. There's cancer councils throughout Australia, and uh, so Cancer Council Tasmania runs a great program called 
um, transport to treatment. I'm, I'm doing a journey. I've come all the way to New York. I'm going to run 42 k's. That's nothing like the cancer journey that many people are, uh, have yeah. to go through. And so what uh, the Cancer Council does is they provide transport for people to get from home to their care. And so yeah. the money I raise from what I'm doing is uh, going towards the, the very practical things like petrol, uh, the upkeep of the cars, because uh, it's volunteer drivers, but, yeah. but all, those, all sort of those very practical things that are required. So, and and that's so relevant, isn't it? There's not a person that hasn't been touched by cancer. I don't Absolutely. Uh, so, every, you know, everyone I talk to who I've said this is if I say so this is what I'm doing, everyone has a cancer story, either yeah. either a friend, a family member, a close family member, or themselves. And and likewise, I I also have a cancer story, not personally, but I lost my father at the age of when I was 15 from cancer, yeah. and uh, I have you know close close relatives who've died and and also are living with cancer so it yeah. touches every touches everyone yeah it does yeah. so why the new york marathon uh, for well, the for your journey yeah so the 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 way i came to run for the new york marathon is 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 through another run we did in Ta- that i did in tasmania last year called the uh, point to pinnacle which is from rest point casino goes 1200 meters up the top of mount wellington or Kunyani, as, uh, as we also call it, and that's 21 k's. And yeah. uh, uh, the, an entry to New York Marathon was possible through uh, competing in that race. So okay. I was successful in getting in, and uh, I thought, well, you know, I've always wanted to run the New York Marathon, and here's an here's an opportunity. And fortunately, because my wife was, you know, I've got a wife and three children at home to between the ages of 22 and 18, but, you know, family support has been great, and, yeah. you know, I've been able to come across and, and do this, so... What's been the most unforgettable thing so far in your training to get to where you are? Yeah, well, yeah the only, my, it's actually not being prepared for the, for actually running long distances. So, okay, I I'm, I'm a doctor. I yeah. should know these things. <laughs> I should understand that you know hydration is important. Yeah, nutrition, it is. you know, Tony is important. Yeah, very much so. And I've I, heard that. <laughs> I read that somewhere. And you know. It's different for, for me, you know. Yeah. I don't need those things, so yeah. uh, it took a while for me to get it to get it into my head that I needed to pay attention to those things because I basically was underdone uh, in the early do- in the early um, weeks when I was going for my long runs. Okay. Um, of course, if I'd listened to my wife, I probably would have done those things as well. But it, yeah, but, uh, there we are. That's as it is. Yeah, we uh, our training uh, has been like uh, people tend to think it's just a journey that's yeah. nice and flat, and yeah. that you slowly build up and everything mm. happens. But we hit obstacles, we get tweaks, we get niggles, yeah. we get some injuries along the way. Yeah, what's been some of those challenges that you faced in this journey? Um, so I, I think it's a psycho- it's the psychological challenge of yeah. really. Uh, believing that I can actually run that far and yeah. that I can actually achieve the goals I've set myself. And I think the longer that I've gone along, uh, sort of, I suppose the other, the learning learnings that I've had is, is it's, it's a big idea to, for me and for others to run 42 Ks. But if you, if you compartmentalize and do it in steps, then multiple steps will get you the distance. And, yeah. But instead of thinking, initially thinking of the enormity and then focusing just on that is to just, Keep it small, and then small increments will get you there over time. So breaking it down, hitting your milestones along the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and, yeah. And once again, some great advice. So, yeah. um, so how can people help support the charity? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, I have a Facebook uh, site, and that's uh, Daniel Owens. And uh, that, that links to an everydayhero.com. Okay. If you, look to, if you go to Everyday Hero, it's transport to treatment. Uh, okay. But uh, if there's a, yeah, so that's 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 my main mechanism for um, for attracting funds. So I was I'm aiming for twelve thousand. Wow. Uh, over ten thousand already. So with oh, the support that's of awesome. That's lo- that's excellent. Local business and, and friends and family and the, yeah. the local businesses that have been supportive have been transport related. So I've gone to. Uh, uh, DJ Motors, uh, which is a local um, uh, Mitsubishi dealership, yeah. uh, Bennett's Petroleum supplying petrol, uh, and also um, the, one of the local tyre companies has provided money. So, t- trying to get the you know t- t- get support from, and I have been at, they've been very supportive in, in providing um, some of the donations. Have there. you always been a runner? Uh, on and off. So on I and off. I would be if I think back over the last 20, 25 years, I've always done. 5k short you know relatively short what i call short runs now yeah um perhaps two or three times a week 
Okay. Uh, and then I'd have periods of time when I wouldn't do that. I'd do swimming and then I'd go back to doing some runs. But long, longer distance runs, that's, that's new for me. I haven't yeah. uh, these sorts of distances. Yeah. Well, it was interesting. I, I just had a chat to Melissa, as you yeah. know, and, and one of the questions she asked me after we'd finished yeah. was, um, when you complete the marathon tomorrow, Tony, will you consider yourself a runner? And I had to think about that because mm. so far I've sort of haven't thought of myself as a runner. I'm just someone who's yeah. silly enough to get out there and try and do the yeah. New York Marathon. But but I actually said, no, I won't because I think I'll be someone that's completed a marathon. Mm. And when my legs start behaving in the way that a runner's leg mm. should behave, I think that's when I'll start to yeah. think of myself as a runner. Yeah. So you've obviously... You've um you've had a, a less drama free lead into this particular time. So are you yeah. a runner? Do you consider yourself a runner? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I and no or at, you know no. I, I I'm a rec- I suppose I'm a rec- I mean I might think of myself as a recreational yeah, runner. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but no, it's funny. It, mentally, I, I don't see myself as I wouldn't put that down on a descriptor for yeah. me as being a runner. A lot of other things I'd put myself down. Possibly. I'm not a runner. But it's interesting, though, and the amount of time I would have spent cumulative over the years running. Running. You know, I probably would, you know. And it's such a th- uh, therapeutic place to be out there oh, running. Do you know what? So I will, it, it, the, long, the longer the run it is, what usually happens is I will start the run not having any, pro- won't have any problems to think about. I'll think of something in the first K or two that I'll start working on, and by the end of the run I will have had it sorted so that's yeah. my that's my thinking time for yeah. working things out you know which is it's therapeutic for me and and once again a lot of the neuro research nowadays tells us that if we're caught up in a problem all we do and we're sitting there trying to solve a problem all yeah. we're doing is regurgitating all the thoughts that we yeah, have about yeah. the problem yeah and now the the some of the best advice is get away from the problem go yeah. out go for a walk yeah. go for a run that's right and then the answer suddenly appears yeah yeah and I suppose the other, so this is uh, not related to really problem, it was not related to problem solving as such, but the, the great benefit for exercise and included that is running is for cancer patients now. So there's a lot of okay. research coming out that actually activity during treatment, uh, if they require uh, chemotherapy or other sorts of therapy for, for cancer, is yeah. of benefit to, to patients. So often you think, of, you know, if someone has a diagnosis of cancer, they start their treatment journey that exercise and walking or swimming or whatever gets put to one side as you concentrate on the on the treatment and the therapy but yeah uh, increasingly it's been recognized that it's important to continue if you if if you've previously done that to continue those things or to have a to introduce some exercise uh, during that time and part of it might be a psychological yeah. mental thing of just taking the focus away from the from the illness and the treatment etc and just uh, you know perhaps rigging the neurons a bit yeah, and you know, potentially a little bit like a placebo effect, maybe. Yeah, but but possibly. health and mm. exercise is always beneficial. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. So why wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, I, I suppose yeah. it stands a reason. But uh, but I guess um, people going through treatment. I've got a brother-in-law going mm. through treatment at the moment for mm. um, for melanoma that's gone throughout his body, and um, yeah. you know, I, I I understand the mindset that they're going through yeah. because you know they're waiting for you know, treatments and advice from the doctor and all mm. that sort of stuff. And mm. it's probably the last thing on their mind to that, think, uh, yeah, I might go for a run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's but, right. But it's good that, uh, I suppose, the uh, the research is starting to indicate that. Yeah. So as well as the doctor saying, look, here's your results. Now yeah. get out and go for a walk or well, something. Well, that's right. That's And that's the way it's going. There's a, a, a plan for the uh, traditional therapy and yeah. also a plan to make sure that you remain active yeah. during, you know, physically active during your treatment. Um, because of the positive effects, yeah. What are you most looking forward to tomorrow? So I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, so I'll, I'll tell you what I'm curious about first. Okay. So I'm curious about. He's just it. about to run forty-two point <laughs> two kilometres, and he's curious. curious. So I'm curious about how it all works at the beginning. You know, yeah. I know that we're all split up into corrals and waves, and we've got letters. You know, A to yeah. F and blah blah blah. So I'm curious how that all works out. And I know this for me, there's going to be a reasonable waiting time because I don't start until uh, ten forty, which is a yeah. few hours after we get there. So how does that work? And then. How does the start happen, and and, and are we all going to be tripping over each other or not? And uh, I th- then I'm think I'm really looking forward to the crowd support. I've just, yeah. I've uh, I've got a shirt which I've had printed here in 
New York, which okay. has got my name in big print, so yeah. you can't miss it. And I'm fully, fully hoping and expecting that crowd support's going to help me some, you know, on and off during the journey. So I'm yeah. really looking forward to the, the vibe and the feel and the support as I'm going along. And, of course, who isn't looking forward to the finish line, you know? Yeah, I think the finishing line's pretty um, key in my mind yeah. at the moment. So I'm yeah. excited about the start. And a little bit like you, three hours, we've got to wait three hours. Yeah. Our kickoff tomorrow is eleven o'clock. So, okay. So they say the party's in the back, and that's yeah. where we, we plan <laughs> to be. But um, yeah. but I'm I'm really looking forward to coming into First Avenue because yeah. there's a lot of talk around. You hear it as you're coming over. I've forgotten the word, name of that bridge, particular uh. bridge. It's not the Williamsburg, but it's something like yeah. that. A Williamsboro, it might be, or something. That when you're coming off that bridge and going down First Ave, when mm. they you start to hear the crowd noise mm. when on the downslope of the bridge, mm. and um, you know the guy on the bus tour yesterday described it like um, you'll feel like a rock star entering a packed out stadium yeah, or I'm something. Saying I'm saying I have goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm once yeah. again like you. I'm looking yeah. forward to the crowd support. Yeah. And I'm hoping that the crowd support will still be there when we're coming through. <laughs> As opposed to the janitors or whatever sweeping <laughs> yeah. up behind you. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, you'll I'm, be fine. yeah, I'm sort of yeah. um, hoping that there are, please people, someone still be on the track while we're running. So. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll yeah, be fine. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, Dan, it's been a pleasure meeting yeah. you. It's um, been awesome. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank you, Tony. Best of luck with your quest. It yeah. sounds like you're going to kill it with your with your target. Yeah. Now, just mm. before we go, how can people donate again? So, uh, you can will it still be open? Because yep. this podcast no, will open. probably be three weeks after. Absolutely, it's open. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, uh, find me on Facebook, Daniel yeah. Owens. I'm wearing a green, uh, sorry, an orange hoodie with uh, Mount, Mount Wellington ice in the background. Okay. So, Daniel Owens, Hobart, Tasmania, and you'll find my the link to my donation site, and that's uh, everydayhero.com.au. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Once again, it's been a pleasure. I wish you all the best for tomorrow and um, continuing success yep. for the cause. And likewise, Tony, all the best for you too. No worries. Okay. Thanks, See Dan. You. Cheers. Bye. Join the group of people impacted by seriously simple stuff to get you unstuck. The first book by Tony Coach Curl. Available at Amazon, Tony's Simple Stuff provides the tool for people to master your life and aspirations. 20% of every book sold supports Carter's cause. Back to Coach Curl. So how was that? That was Daniel Owens. Ran the marathon to raise funds for cancer. Now, I do know that Daniel actually had a radio interview. As soon as he crossed over the finish line, he had a radio interview scheduled for the people back in Tasmania. So that's how keen and how how certain he was that he was going to finish. Now, his, some of the key insights that I took away from that particular interview, his approach was unique in many respects. He was training for a low, long road race by minimizing long road runs. So... Uh, taking the stress out of his body, doing a combination of exercises. So if anyone's ever thought that they would want to do a marathon or, or wanted to set that as a bit of a bucket list item, you know, Daniel shows that you don't have to relentlessly pound the pavement every day to be able to get in shape to to do the marathon. So his approach was certainly different. Now, his passion for healthcare certainly came through, and I'm sure that um, that meant something to everyone. You know, everyone's been touched by cancer in some way. Everyone has their own cancer story, I guess. And the, the the sheer fact that not only does Dan work in the field, he raises funds for it as well as just um, held in very high regard by and very respected, um, both in my eyes and I'm sure in yours. Now, the other things that stood out do... Some of the comments, do things in steps and multiple steps will ultimately see you make the difference. And how true is that? How often do we set ourselves a big task, a big goal, and then we fall away because we feel like we're failing because we haven't got close enough to it? But it really is the key to success to be able to break it down into steps and to focus on getting to the next step as opposed to getting to the ultimate goal. Because if we continue to focus on just getting to the next step, we ultimately make it to the finish line. Now, we, we've heard that time and time again during this series around. Dee Costello told us. Melissa Urie talked about it. 
Um, Colin Sampson from the Indigenous Marathon talked about it. Do things in steps and multiple steps will ultimately see you make the distance. Whatever that is for you, you know, whether it's chasing that next promotion, building your business to the next level or chasing a life goal that you've set yourself, set the steps out and chase the next step. Now, Dan, run the marathon. In four hours, 15. And if his photo on his Facebook page is any indicator, he ran that with a huge Statue of Liberty crown, made a a foam Statue of Liberty crown on his head. So congratulations, Dan. Well done. You certainly stood out. I saw the shirt. It said Tasmanian Dan. So I hope the crowds just supported you all the way through. I've got no doubt that you would have stood out. And hopefully that would have uh, created a little bit of impetus as well to to raise some more funds. So congratulations. But um, here's the interesting thing. As I said, Dan ran the marathon in 4.15, which is an awesome time, fantastic time, uh, a great time. But five kilometres from the finish, he, he felt this really sharp pain in his knee. <laughs> And he felt a sharp pain in his knee about five kilometres from the finish line. And in his words, in his words, because he ran through that and he finished strong. And he knew he had to finish strong because he had that radio interview back in Tasmania that he had to make. So he finished strong, but he really felt uh, the pain in his knee on his way back to the motel. Now, he, he stayed in the States for a couple of days. I think he went to Philly for a while and then flew home Wednesday. Um, so that's, what's that, three days after the marathon. And returned, I, I guess, to some sort of normality in, in the working world. He he flew to Sydney um, and just resumed work, he, returning to normal operations. So, But he was feeling like the knee wasn't getting better and he was feeling a bit out of breath. So he went to the docks. He went to see what was wrong and he went to the docks. They discovered he had deep vein thrombosis, which is DVT, and that had ha- and that the clot had affected his lungs. So now, when I was talking with Dan recently, he he commented that it's been interesting being on the other side of the doc patient relationship on something so serious, and and. You know, deep vein thrombosis has been known to be this bit of a silent killer. You know, the, these blood clots that are formed travel around, and if they if they're not um, if they don't dissolve or if they if they don't get um, discovered, you can die from them. It, it's a silent killer. So now he mentioned when I was having he, he mentioned in the interview that he ran the Point to Pinnacle race, and that was what provided his entry into the New York City Marathon. And and he was due to run that again. And now when he, he considers himself really lucky that he was diagnosed because um, if he hadn't gone to see the doc and if he hadn't been diagnosed, he would have been running that again. And, you know, who knows what potentially could have happened. So he considers himself really, really lucky. So So there's a bit of a precautionary tale there, you know, Dan spoke in the interview about the real need to be critical and around your hydration and your nutrition. And once again, what happened to him afterwards really rams that point home. You have to be really mindful of your own nutrition and your hydration. And and so even when you're you're a medical professional like Dan was, who was conscious of his hydration and Nutrition, something like DVT can still happen. So there are some really precautionary tales there. And, you know, it's interesting to think about, you know, how many people actually do a, a big major run like like a marathon and then suffer some sort of um, illness, sickness, uh, injury a couple of weeks later because of the actual stress that it places on the body. So... But the reality is that marathons are, are, are here. We just need to make sure that we're, um, we're taking the right precaution. They're addictive. So it won't be the last one that I do. Dan's going to keep running. But um, there is obviously a need to make sure that we're running sensibly and that we're taking care of ourselves at the same time. 
Hey, look, just on another side note, um, I didn't mention this after Melissa's interview on episode 94, but Melissa Yuri ran the marathon in four hours 16. So if you remember her interview, she was gunning for a time, hoping for a time of four hours, but she... Uh, she got there in 4.16, which is an awesome time. And, and one of the key things that stood out in Melissa's interview, once again, is that um, some words of advice from a friend that said she never wanted to finish a marathon disappointed. So the time, not necessarily the key thing that you run a marathon for. You want to compete against yourself. You want to test yourself in that endurance atmosphere. And then the time, well, that's a nice to have at the end of the day. So congratulations to both Dan and Melissa. You know, think about it. Dan ran 4.15, Melissa ran 4.16. So congratulations to you both. It's been a real honour and a pleasure to have met you during the New York Marathon. It's a real honour for me and a pleasure to be able to share your stories out to the listeners and um, of the Coach Call podcast. Now, as per always, thank you to... Our sponsors at Think and Grow Business, strengthening leadership, mindset and business, um, improving the performance of people in business. So check it out at thinkandgrowbusiness.com. Um, they will certainly look after you. They've certainly got a program that can help you build better teams and create better leaders. Don't forget, I've got a book out there. It's called Seriously Simple Stuff to Get You Unstuck. It's available at Amazon and where all good books are sold online. So, And don't forget, 20% of that book goes to support the wonderful uh, non-for-profit called Carter's Cause who are supporting the great work that Heart Kids Australia do in, um, in supporting kids and the parents of kids born with congenital heart disease. Next week, I'm going to share some stories, not of people that I interviewed, but from people that I met. And once again, there's some real inspiration here. There's some real, there's some real Aussie characters. There's some real inspiration. Um, some of the running coaches that I met over there were just amazing. They run every day, like, you know, and it's just phenomenal to hear and see some of their, their progression with their clients and whatnot. So until next week, don't forget the golden rule. The golden rule, just don't be an asshole. I'll see you then. Mm-hmm.